it's like when you go out and you make a video, what are you looking to accomplish with it? Um, honestly, it, it's just I'm trying to put out a I've always approached everything uh, like just even going back to just uh, this, the, the things we touched on earlier with um, just talking in general uh, from a common sense approach. So I think that when I, I I like to speculate, I like to speculate on what I've seen and what I've read. I don't like to do, I don't I won't do spoilers and all that stuff because or leaks, I should say um, potential spoilers because I like to speculate. So, uh, for example, if you take that news piece where there's uh, an actor spotted here or whatever, um, I, I, you know, I would use that to speculate what that could be and see how close I could get. But uh, I, I just try to approach everything from a common sense perspective, because, I mean, here's the thing. A lot of people like to say George R. R. Martin, uh, specifically tied to Game of Thrones and Ice and Fire, but they, you know, he breaks tropes. Uh, yeah, he does, but he just really doesn't overuse them. Um, mm-hmm. So there's still a pretty straightforward story. There's still good guys and bad guys. It's not ever, you know what I mean? There's so I try to approach it from that common sense perspective. Um, I know a lot of people like to uh, bash Dan and Dave in the the show, right? And uh, and say that they're just they're horrible writers and they have no. Um, they have no uh, ability when it comes to uh, not going off uh, George R. R. Martin's material, which is, you know, could you know arguably be par- par- partially true. But at the same time, uh, we just don't know how much uh, material they have from Winds of Winter and all these other and and the and possibly even Spring. Um, I think they'll have more material than we think. Uh, we're not insiders who know, so I think I try to approach it from a common sense perspective. And and I, and I always lay out everything in a way where, if you've seen, um, where if I have an original, I think is an original theory, I'll still put it out there that, look, this may not be original <laughs> because yeah. I've read so many things and saw so many videos. I could have saw this something like this six months ago or read it on a on a forum a year ago. And it just comes and I think it's original. So it's it's, it's a it's it's hard to it's hard to make to come up with anything original these days. But I don't approach it. Um, to try to do anything but give my opinion in a common sense way and just kind of honestly, I really actually, when I say I want to hear from you guys as far as comments, I actually do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spent the first year or more, probably up until right at a year ago, and I literally responded to every single comment. That was what it was about for me. And I had so many people say, um, reply, hey, I just subscribed because I didn't think you'd actually respond. Mm-hmm. So it is for me actually about a conversation. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people say that, but I really mean that. You know what I mean? So, which is why I do the live streams now. I do them well. I think it's funny you brought up tropes. I actually, most recent Game of Thrones video was all about how he handles fantasy tropes. And you are correct. I mean, I, I did a lot of research for it, and he does subvert tropes, but he also plays a lot of tropes straight because. Sure. You can't subvert tropes if you're not playing any straight, number one. Uh, You have to set expectations and then subvert expectations. But, you know, I mean, you can break down a story, like you said, in a common sense way. And I I feel you have a good understanding of storytelling. That's another thing I'm working on because that's universal. I don't just want to know a lot of facts, like every house sigil of Game of Thrones. Hey, if that's what makes you happy, that's what makes you happy. But I like story structure. I like to actually be able to look at any piece of entertainment and analyze it in an intelligent way. But it's also my opinion, you know, you approach things and you do actually want to have a conversation about it. And and it seems that you do because, you know, you, your live streams watched by thousands of people at a time every Sunday and, you know, they're entertaining. They're not getting stale. You're not, sometimes you watch people's live streams and it seems like they're kind of begging for money or they're, they're just doing a live stream because they set a schedule for themselves and they say they have to do it. I've actually heard people say, well, the algorithm says I have to do this. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm a great way to start the stream. You pulled me in right away. Uh, but no, I, mean, I do enjoy your streams and there's that personal you know, connection that you do feel because it seems like you're being honest with people. Um, do you feel that you do better on the spot than you do better when you're being recorded? What is your day to day as far as your schedule? I know you do have series of videos such as the foreshadowing videos that you were doing. So do you like right. set out a schedule for yourself or is it more of a, you know, free form? Yeah, it's more of a free form. It, honestly, it's more of a, you know, get up. Um, what do I got to edit this day? Do I need to shoot this day? Uh, so for the foreshadowing series, uh, that's a little easier because I'll, 
record three videos in, in one sitting. Um, I try to break those up to, and, and that is for kind of the, the algorithm. Uh, I don't, a lot of people said you should just do one, one video per episode. I'm like, no, I don't want to do a, an hour video. Um, you're going to watch 10 minutes of it and be done. So I split those up into three videos per episode. So those are, those are a little more planned out. Everything else other than the live stream being on a schedule um, is just kind of, like I said, especially recently, there's just nothing new. So I, I will fully admit there's been a few videos I put out where they are stale and I can look back and say, oh, I just I wasn't even joking about anything. Usually I'm making a joke here or there. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's like you got to keep putting it out there, especially because uh, you're making a living doing it now. Um, but so, yeah, I don't have a a schedule, so to speak. Um, I, I just kind of just, I'm, it's, it's a grind every day. Uh, it's, it's just an everyday grind, um, 12, 13 hours or more. And, uh, that's really what it is. Um, so I, when I, like I just recently put out a little, uh, Cersei video on the whole Maggie, the frog prophecy video two days ago, just a little twist. And it was just something that popped in my head. I didn't, I didn't plan it. You know, I was uh, thinking about something else and it popped in. I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. I'll just throw it out there for discussion. Not that I believe it necessarily. Um, so that's kind of how I work. It's almost just a freestyle. People that just do news as well. I'm not downing on anybody. I just I do have to question um, what some people are as many people as they get get out of it because they're subscribed to you for a reason. They're a Patreon of yours for a reason. It's because that helps them through their day. You know, I mean, it's not like some selfish thing to put out a video that you might not be too thrilled about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with that. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, I'm just saying it's part of the, it's part of the grind. And, and especially after three years, well, the first year was more of a hobby, right? You're not really sure what's happening. Uh, type of thing. But then you realize, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going pretty good. Somebody, they're digging this for whatever reason. And you're really not sure, but you're, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can, you completely go off comments, you know, because that's the, that's, that's the feedback. Uh, so when you have people saying, you know, I love the way you explain things in a common sense way or straightforward way, and you don't seem like a book snob or, you know, those type of things. And uh, those make you feel good about it. So you're like, Oh, okay. I, I get it. You know? So um, yeah, but you, you, you do have, um, and that's where a little bit of the pressure comes in, I guess, because you do have an obligation. If you stop making videos, like you can, I mean, obviously like Patreon, for example, you let people know, Hey, I'm going to be uh, gone this week or whatever. Got some personal stuff. Cause I mean, I'm uh, you know, single dad with a 16 year old softball player uh, that plays year round uh, doing all this on top of it. And uh, so it's not easy. It's not easy. People, I've had a few people actually say, I think I'll do a channel. I'm like, go for it. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be a fr- frustrated as hell. Yeah. Um, and then some of them made it and some of them actually wrote back and said, I don't know how you do it. I can't. Uh, so, I mean, I guess a lot of people think it's easy, but then again, I did too. Um, when I saw, I think like I mentioned before, I saw emergency awesome. And I was like, okay, well this guy's, he can talk and he's got, I think at the time, 300,000 subscribers. Damn, I can, I can talk like that or be maybe better than that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yeah, I mean, you find out real quick. It ain't, it ain't, uh, <laughs> it ain't all just, uh, talking into your phone and uploading. Everybody sees it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's nice to finally have somebody on this, uh, show admit, admit that it, that it, that it's very difficult to keep pushing on at times. And, you know, people might look at it, oh, look at all the money this guy's getting from Patreon. It's like, well, they're living off that. And Patreon is something that can be taken away at any moment for no exactly. reason. They're not signed to a contract. I mean, it, it, you're providing them a service, but you know, I mean, they don't have to give you the money. So it could go away at any moment. Um, it, you know, they're just living like that. And then the grind of making the videos, like you said, like uh, with just coming up, like I was researching for a bigger Westworld video last night and I ended up staying up way too late because I ended up taking a little aspect of it, the gunfire and making a video about it. So you think, Oh, I'll make this quick video 13 hours later. And exactly. I'm a pretty good editor. I, 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 you know, like I can edit, I can edit pretty quick. And, uh, you know, but then it turns into this ordeal and it's like, oh, shit, I got to I got to buff up on a smoke screen because, uh, you know, the guy that I had in mind when thinking of this show is going to be my guest tomorrow. I think that's the thing, too. How do you deal with the, you know, it's it, it's always these uh, these peaks and then these lows, you know, these highs, 
lows. It's like, man, I'm putting out this video and there's this hope that this is the one that's going to hit, especially for somebody like me. And I've had a few that do. And then the ones that I'm so proud of, nothing. But the ones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a mind game. It's a grind. And and if anybody's thinking about starting a channel, just expect that. I mean, most people quit because they they they're in that low and they think you, you can't get out of it. But you just it, it's if you want it, if you want to work for yourself and go through it. I mean, it's just like it it goes back to the whole thing. It's not a real job. OK, let's swap. <laughs> let's swap places. Uh, I actually had a family member one time say uh, I was I made a joke about something because she said something like um, something about money. I said, hell, give me, I said something. I said something about give me three thousand dollars. She said, I'm not giving money to somebody who don't have a job. I'm like, oh, OK. And even uh, uh, a, a cousin of mine stepped up, and said, are you fucking kidding? You know how much he works? <laughs> so because uh, he knows he knows the deal. But. It is absolutely a grind and uh, it, it's frustrating as hell sometimes. And it's, uh, but what makes it worth it is when you get those comments, those, uh, you know, those things where you said, you know, people say, um, you know, you make my day a little better. Uh, that was so, this was funny or whatever, or I never thought about this that way. And I really appreciate, you know, those kind of comments are what keeps you going. And you get that satisfaction when you, when you hit render and you hit upload and, and you do all the things and get it out there. And then it's like another dopamine hit. You know, yeah. you want to see uh, the, the the responses. And uh, so it, it is a grind uh, for sure. But you just got to you got to keep pushing. And that's what I did, because I started with, you know, five subscribers like everybody else. And that was all my friends and family. Hey, I started a channel. Go subscribe, please. And they never even watched it. Yeah. Um, and then the you get kindness smart, of the heart. Subscribe. Exactly. And then you get the honest feedback. Uh, right. And when you actually get a stranger watching it and mm. uh, that just kind of builds. But. You're so excited, you know, and then um, now I find myself uh, it's it's odd. You got to remember those times because I'll be mad that I just put out a Dragon Raised by Wolves part five where I think it's I'm actually proud of that video. I'm actually proud that um, I, that came to me in that way, whether it's right or wrong. I think it's a well done, well researched video. Um, it's got 60,000 views, which is which is fine for an off season video, but it's an end game video with season eight coming. And I really thought that that would take off quicker. And I think it'll be a slow burn. So I think it'll be okay. But it, you know, to I'm, I'm really, I, that was one of my, uh, I guess, videos that I'm the, the proudest of because I, I put a lot of time into editing that. Oh, not editing so much because there was just a, a few quotes and some screenshots, but you know, the, the research and, and the, from the books and all that stuff to bring, because I try to bring a balanced, uh, you know, I could be an all a, a Song of Ice and Fire channel. Uh, mm -hmm. You have like uh, geniuses like Aziz, History of Westeros and Ashea and those guys and, uh, you know, um, a Jim, a Secrets of the Citadel. I mean, book geniuses. So I, I, and then you have the show only channels um, that are main, mainly focused on the show. And I've always tried to be like the balanced person. I want to talk about the show. That's primarily your audience, but bring in some uh, some some book stuff to make them understand or help them understand whatever you know what I mean. Uh, what's going on? Why is this happening in the show? What does that mean? And what's because they ask you, they ask you anyway. Does this happen in the books or something? Or what is this? Or who's this? Or in so anyway, that's always been an approach: is try to be the the balanced channel versus all ice and fire book nerds and book snobs on that for that matter, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then just show only. Okay, we're all talking about the same stuff anyway. Yeah, there's there's no shame in in, in being either one. And I think the most important thing about the uh, bringing the balance, at least the small audience I have right now, is more show oriented. But if ever there's a large large um, contradiction with the story of the actual books and the show, that's when I will always mention it because then you are just letting the floodgates open if you don't bring up something that is so drastically different in the books. If you just like say it as blanket statement that something oh, happens yeah. and it doesn't happen in the books, they're going to jump all over you. So, you know, it's important, but it's also important to bring up, like, like I said, like I'm always trying to better just my knowledge about storytelling in general, be, be able to look at things in a little bit of a better way. And I understand what you're talking about when you put all this effort into a video it's not so much like the editing, like you said. I think it's like the feeling that we put into it. Um, some videos I find I'll come up with a concept and then I'll get stuck. So I'm losing where I'm trying to go with it. But the, there's those videos that you have your straight just path of you know what you want to do. 
and you have this idea in your head and then bringing it to fruition is just beautiful. And then it takes a lot of work and it's a lot of emotional strain as well. And then it goes out and then the video that you did on, you know, some kind of, you know, just more stale, you know, mundane kind of overdone topic, you know, gets, you know, 30 K views and my other one's sitting at 200. And I'm like, man, why don't people appreciate this? You know what I mean? But it's like, that comes down to the same issue of creating content is like, who are we to say? It's like, can we get mad that people don't like certain things? It's like, it's right. It's, it's odd. And a lot of that's also the, the weird YouTube algorithm and the changes, but there's been so many of those cases where I think, okay, this is going to be a one, this is going to be one that, that hits, you know, and it does nothing um, in comparison to just some, okay, I just thought of this. Let me record this really quick. And all of a sudden it's, it's a hundred K video or whatever, but it's like, wait a minute, what, what's, what's, I, but this one I put so much more effort and thought into, but yeah, I mean, it's just out of your control because I think everything right now in the Game of Thrones world anyway, as far as YouTube goes, it's, it's all about theories. Um, it's all about, but there's no new real theories. No, there's just not. Um, so everybody's, I guess, trying to take something and, and put a twist on it or, or what about this? And I've done that myself when I actually, but I won't put it out unless I actually think it's a valid point. To make a theory and to have a twist for the sake of a twist is a cheap, cheap trick on not only, and it's done, Westworld, one of my favorite shows, it's done with the nonlinear narrative and, and William being the man in black. That sacrificed some of the integrity of the story. Um, I feel that they really were going for a cheap little twist in a little hook to have the theory uh, crafting members, you know, join up when they right. could have had a more cohesive story doing something, uh, you know, just a little bit. I know Nolan, I mean, he, he writes a story and he puts it on index cards and he just, you know, takes a leaf blower. He's like, now we got it. You know what I mean? Like he, <laughs> he doesn't want it. He's like, no, he's like, if somebody tells him a story, like he's like, wait a minute, are you starting from the beginning? He's like, what the fuck? Are you? Get the hell out of here. He's like, no, 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 no. Make it as confusing as possible. It's like nothing straightforward, but you know, I mean, it's just for the sake of it. It's not, it doesn't add like, that's when I got on some people in the Westworld community and I probably shouldn't have if we're talking about, Oh, who's Logan going to be. I bet Logan could be the stepdad for, I'm like, does it, what does that do to the story? How right. does that further the plot? How does that, how does that make any difference in what we're watching currently other than you can pat yourself on the back? And yeah, we all like to pat ourselves on the back. I wish I could do it more often, but it should be something that, you know, you're making not because it's shocking, not because nobody said it. Like I make a joke in one of my last videos and I don't mean to down on Thrones, but it is true that I can make a Game of Thrones video a lot quicker than I can make a Westworld video because Westworld is more of a complex topic to talk about currently. And I say, hey, just, you know, give me another, uh, you know, faceless men theory. Who Who is uh, Jack and Hagar really? He's a faceless man, so I can't prove you wrong. You know, oh, right. he's Serial Pharrell. Thanks, bro. Right. Hey, 100,000 <laughs> views. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, it's it could be Izzy Rhaegar. Can't prove him wrong. Just No, no. Rhaegar's Mance, man. Romance Raider. <laughs> doesn't matter. I mean, but I'm saying you can do both. You exactly. Can do both, and they're going to do fantastic. As long as you just don't feel any emotion and you're numb when you're making them. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, let's get into some theories because I actually don't like to talk shop with, with the YouTube Confidential, but I can't help but to want to pick Smokescreen's uh, brain here. Uh, maybe even you'll lean back for me back oh um, yeah okay all right yeah yeah just put on some music <laughs> chill uh no but um i i am a little bit worried number one i want to hear your opinion on this i don't think there's gonna be a dream of spring didn't see you guys there. I'm Justin Thomas and I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did enjoy that video, make sure to check out some of our other videos, maybe right here, possibly right there, but make sure to subscribe right there. And we'll see you guys soon.